Greetings and welcome back to the We Shall Not Sleep podcast. Excellent. Happy Mother's Day. This is a tribute to mothers for everyone out there who was a mother. Uh, thank you so much for your sacrifice, for, for carrying your children for, for nine months or however long it was, and uh, continuing to put up with us. Uh, I know my mom's favorite name for me is Brat. I know that I uh, like to keep her young by... Uh, by taking her on adventures and, and things, but I also know that I can age her quite a bit and uh, make her hair even whiter than it is sometimes because of uh, the the constant uh, frustrations uh, that I cause, <laughs> sometimes on purpose. I like to bug her. Um, but today, yes, is truly a tribute to mothers. Um, it is amazing the when you look at the very feminine qualities of God all throughout the Old and New Testament, the, the shepherding, the the protection, the, the the care and tenderness that uh, truly only a mother can give. You know, a, a bond that my mom and I share. We both love music, but uh, she used to sing to me when I was when I was a little kid. Um, she used to stroke my hair and sing, uh, "You are my sunshine. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine." And that that is something. Every time I hear that song, I just you know, it's instinctively, it's like, oh, it reminds me of my mom. And my mom is tremendous. Her name's Julie Crable. She's been on this podcast. And the one thing you have to understand about my mom is that she's really annoying to watch mysteries or thrillers with when it comes to TV or movies. And it's not because she talks the entire time. It's because she can figure things out so quickly. I don't know if you've ever seen the 2005, I think it's 2005 film, The Prestige by Christopher Nolan. It's about dueling, you know, uh, magicians. And my mom, called at the end of that movie during the first few scenes. She goes, oh, I bet this is what's going to happen. And then it ended up happening. I'm like, are you kidding me? I had to go watch that movie a second time to figure out what had happened. So for those of you who've seen that movie, maybe you're chuckling to yourself. If not, I certainly recommend that you go and see it and see if you can have the same type of sleuth uh, and detective mind that my, my mother has. But at the time of this recording, my mom is currently making her way back uh, to to Michigan. She's been traveling with her friend. She's been out viewing the, the western part of the United States. She was in Colorado and seeing the mountains for the first time. And it's been really cool because I've been out there. My father and I have been out there before. And being able to to hear and to see uh, that excitement in somebody else, uh, seeing all that the beautiful landscape here in the United States that, that, that uh, we have is really cool. And, and my heart grows fond. I mean, it's only been a week since I've seen my mother, but I, I see her a couple times a week still. And I, it's because I love her. And my mom is an incredibly intelligent person and, and incredibly thoughtful. Um, she, has, she has her degree in family life education, which is for family counseling. And she's really good at what she does. And the one thing that you have to understand is that not only is she intelligent and able to uh, feel out uh, the correct answers when it comes to, like, again, mysteries or just kind of knowing people, you know, in the psychological realm, she can she knows who she's dealing with, um, and she uh, she really really uh, puts a lot of time and effort into those who have been wounded wounded by the world not not physical trauma victims but those those women who have been emotionally uh, battered and, and scarred by the world by by other men other women um, in their lives uh, that have had like trauma and she helps them. And she doesn't even charge any money for it. It's it's incredibly generous of her um, to to help in, in these ways. And, and it's the thing, when you look at a mom, what does a mom do? What is a mom for? The one thing that that I I look at and most mostly when it comes to to her is that that same tenderness you see you see in God about how he wants to gather uh people under him. He wants to let the little ones come and be with him. He is mourning over uh, his city, Jerusalem, because they have turned their back on him. So it's this longing and this cry of, please return to me, the person that, that cares for you the most, the person that helped carry you, if you will. And that's not trying to take anything out of context. I, I think of the other passage in, in, in Luke chapter 2, uh, Mary's song. And you know something that, that is uniquely uh, given to us is... is the prayer of Mary, this heart cry um, that that we have, uh, that we see, and this this idea. And excuse me, I, I Luke chapter two, obviously being the, um, that's being the birth of Jesus. But Mary's song 
uh, at the end of Luke chapter 1, which leads into Luke chapter 2. She says, And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever and ever, just as he promised our ancestors. And th this is something that, on the heels of receiving this news of, of being humble, saying, why would you choose me? She lifts her soul up to the Lord, and what a tremendous, tremendous testimony to the rest of all mothers that would come to be able to read those same words, saying that any gift that's given in, in the gift of pregnancy and the, in a gift of a child, saying, my soul will still magnify the Lord, and this is our example. A, a low-to-do young woman of cultural shame because, you know, Joseph was going to divorce her quietly because who is going to believe this, this woman, right? Who is going to believe this woman that, that she's now been chosen to carry the savior of the world. And in that she chose to give glory to God. And that is something that I see all the time. And it's something I see in my own mother, uh, because she has the faith uh, that can move mountains. And I've seen that. My The biggest lessons, and the thing is, you think of lessons all the time. This is something that, that I think about. Uh, us guys uh, have a tendency not to be observant uh, when it comes to um, certain things. Not all things, but certain things. And I was, I was at a Wendy's, a fast food restaurant here in the States, with my mom. And I was, you know, this is before 2000, so this is about 20, 23, 24 years ago now. And we we were behind this lady who, according to my mom, I don't remember this, had yellow shoes, a yellow sundress, and a yellow hat on. And my mom asked me, hey, Michael, what, what do you think one of her favorite colors is? And, you know, of course, you could say, well, wait, that's a big assumption. But my, mom's, my mom would always say, you're not decked out in one color if you don't like that color. Now, being a young boy, I looked at her. I mean, I looked at this woman, and I said, oh. And my mom said, Michael look at her. And I, and I whispered, I said, Lello, cause I couldn't say yellow. And <laughs> it's one of those things that I was teaching me from a, from a small, a small age that to be observant it, look at the world around you. You have the brain power to do this. Don't, don't go through life with your mouth wide open and, and your brain on standby. Another thing my mom taught me spiritually, I remember something about the world being, uh, being observed, you know, through, through your, your eyes and what you can see with your physical eyes, but what about the spiritual lens? What about when you when you take it in a different direction? And this is something my mom, the, the biggest lesson I've appreciated is choosing peace. Choosing peace. And if you are a Christian, and th this is contingent a lot upon a lot of things because people can choose peace when they are incredibly narcissistic, right? Well, as Christians, this is again through a Christian worldview and a Christian lens. If you are fasting, if you are reading your Bible, if you're praying and seeking the Lord's face, if you're doing what you need to do and you're faced with a decision, you're faced with this, this maybe it's a monumental, maybe it's something very simple, maybe it's a temptation, maybe it's a blessing, but, it, but it's a point in the road, it's the fork in the road saying, what do I do? I have to make a decision. And my mom just said, choose peace. What, what brings your soul peace? And in one of those lessons I had my senior year of high school where I had been a runner for almost a decade uh, at that point in, in, in competition. And I got to a point where I'm like, I, I just don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. And I got to the first day of, of track practice, my senior year, this had been my last opportunity to run in an athletic level because I wasn't going to go to college and run. I wasn't that good. And I said, you know, I don't want to go to track practice. And one of my friends said, well, then don't go. And I said, yeah, the idea of going to track practice really stresses me out. I don't want to do that. And so I didn't. I chose peace and had the best time my, my last few months of my senior year because I didn't have to put pressure on myself. I didn't have to live up to any other one else's expectations. And I went home. I remember where I was. I went home. I said, Mom, Dad, I'm not doing track this year. It just isn't what I want to do. And I'm not having fun. I choose peace. 
and it is amazing what can happen when your when your parents have the ability to read God's word, do it, listen to God's word, and then try to train a child up in that. And that's why our the Book of Wisdoms um, talks about this. If you ever want wisdom, go to Proverbs and go to Ecclesiastes. Um, and one of the one of the chapters in Proverbs, the book of the one of the books of wisdom in the Old Testament, is Proverbs twenty two verse six. You know, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And a lot of us, we 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 look at our adult children, and some of us are probably thinking, "What happened?" And you know, the the Bible is true throughout all generations. It doesn't mean you don't try. People still have free will. But one of the the prayers for every parent is that even if you do train up your child the way they should go, and that let's say they forsake it, they forsake the ways of the Lord, that God will still reach them. There's that hope and faith someday that they will come back. They will not depart fully from it. And the best part is if I ever had a crisis of faith, I could never blame my parents. I could never, under any circumstance, say that my parents didn't love me. And for those out there that talk about the sacrifice of parents. I know what my parents had to go through, especially my mom. And I've been causing her grief a long time, and she was a clam sick, and they had to take me two and a half months early. I was through emergency C-section. I was taken the two and a half months early, and it was a very difficult time on my mother, and she has been fighting ever since um, to um, keep me around, but also to to protect me. And it's very much a mama bear and cub type of relationship. Some might criticize it as saying, "Ah, oh, well, you're you're too close. It's overburdened." Like, well, they're my parents. They're they're my entire life. And my mom on this Mother's Day, she's always there, always there. And the thing, one of the things that I, I admire about my mom, and it's not because I'm a, I'm a beneficiary of it, but you have never seen anyone who can fold clothes the way my mom does. It's it's like vacuum sealed, creased. And she worked in a department store for years, so it makes sense, but it is unbelievable. Her wrapping talents. If you ever want uh, a gift wrap, she'll take it, she'll do it for free, but I'd like to tell her that she should start her own business. The wrapping skills of this lady is incredible. It's like those things that I just admire about my mom. It's like, and how do you do that? And, and, and it's the simple ways. You find beauty even in the subtle ways. And when when I look at my when my mom, we her and I can talk for hours. My dad and I can talk. We, we want to talk. Here's my dad. We talk for two minutes and we sit in the same room and we don't say anything. It's not because I don't want to talk. I mean, I have a podcast for a reason. But my dad, you know, like like a lot of guys, it's like, well, what are we gonna talk about? We, we we have to keep talking. But my mom and I, four or five hours at a time, can just go back and forth, back and forth, and and this in this last week, uh, we've certainly missed her. And and last fall. Um, when she had when she had COVID and we didn't know if she was going to come home. It was serious. 10, 11 uh, days in the hospital. She was on um, up to 12 liters of oxygen, if I'm rem- remembering correctly, which is a lot for those who don't understand. Like there's, it comes to a point right around there where they can't give you anymore. There's really nothing more they can do. And uh, it was, it was one of those moments of, yeah, my mom's human, but like I can't do anything. And it was this feeling of powerlessness. And it was the same type of feeling that she had when I was delivered um, through C-section is that you know, I, I had to be hooked up to tubes. I was on a, uh, I was, I was in the NICU at a hospital. They, I, I didn't have the normal, um, please like ho- hold your baby to your chest and, and talk to him. Like I didn't have that. And my mom was longing for that. And, and she's been doing that ever since. And so I admire her in, in so many ways. She's the strongest woman I know because of, of who she is. She, uh, she is somebody I could talk to and I never want to lose. So mom, this this Mother's Day, I love you so much. Thank you for your sacrifice throughout all the years. Words cannot express how much I appreciate you. And for that, I admire you. Thank you for listening to this podcast. For all the mothers out there, have a belated Mother's Day here in the United States and for all the mothers around the world. May God bless you and may God keep you.